so you want to start a garden and get a jump start but now everything's on quarantine so a lot of uh, hardware places and a lot of seed companies are sold out so what do you do well if you're a real beginner gardener like I was you probably don't really even want to mess with seeds honestly you're gonna to want to buy plants that are already established now assuming I have no idea how long this quarantine stuff's gonna last uh, you might be able to get plants you might be able not to but you do have a secret weapon in your pocket you can get stuff out of the grocery store and regrow and start some stuff uh, uh, for your garden I you know some of you guys are in the south so you can start a garden right now I still got about a month to wait although it's a real early spring so I'm gonna try to cheat and get some things in the ground but I will grow them inside and have them ready so I'm gonna take you through our grocery store which is kind of picked over but I'll show you a couple things you can buy right now that you can just grow uh, put it by the window in a pot and, and get it started as far as seeds go you know unless you really know what you're doing most likely gonna fail growing seeds inside you have to really have the right kind of indoor grow lights or a heck of a lot of sun at least six hours of sun on your seeds and you have to have the right size trays or what will happen is you will get a seedling but when you plant it it won't do anything or it'll be really stunted and shocked and it just won't grow well so you're better off just kinda if you're gonna mess with seeds just wait and put them in the ground it's gonna be an early spring hopefully so you should have plenty of time uh, you can still definitely sow them right into the soil and you'll get pretty good results or you can put them in trays outside make sure they're watered and don't overheat um, and, and get them started if you have the weather for it and then move them over after you know they sprout a little but honestly if you're gonna do all that trouble you might as well just put them right in the ground the way we're gonna go as beginning gardeners is you're gonna find plants that are ready to go if you can if you can have access to them and um, and put those directly in the ground and you're not going to mess with seeds if you can get heirloom plants or organic plants that you can collect the seeds this year and the next year you know have some time some breathing room so you can get a garden started then you're good uh, so let me take you on the tour of our shopping that's what you can call it now it looks you know it the shelves are pretty picked over in some places but they're starting to restock it's not that bad it, like it was a, a few days ago but the moods changed you know a few days ago I went out and everybody's laughing talking in a good mood they were like relaxed that they actually had a kind of forced holiday now I go people are dressed in masks and gloves there's like glass shields up in front of the cashiers which I mean I get hygienically is not a bad idea but it, it feels and, and nobody's like smiling everybody's kind of nervous nobody looks in you in the eye the the energy's definitely changed in the last few or three days around here so uh, it just even more reason I think you need to stay positive and instead of just sitting there watching hours of news get off the damn couch and start a garden do something proactive that you'll feel good about controlling your future and protecting you and your family so let me show you a couple things you can pick up on your next grocery run. Firstly, I think the biggest bang for the buck is potatoes. And if you can get seed potatoes, great. But they're not around here because it's in the north. It's too early for them. And now some of the hardware shops are closing down um, where you get them from. And if you try to order them, they're not there online anymore. So we're going to buy potatoes. This is a much more expensive way to do it, but it will work if you need to. Uh, potatoes are your best bet. The problem is you can't use all potatoes. Like, this was just in a bin. I said, sweet potatoes. I have no idea if this thing's been treated or not. And by what I mean is they will spray them so they stop growing with a, a spray that sterilizes them. So, for instance, I've got these Yukon Golds here. That Yukon Gold. And then you look... And it doesn't tell you if they're treated. It doesn't say organic or anything. It doesn't tell you anything that you really need to know, except it's a product of the U.S. So, if it's a product of the U.S., I know it hasn't been irradiated, probably. Most of the time when they ship them back and forth, um, if it's anything out overseas, it's like 100% that it's been irradiated. But here, this might be good, it might not. 
The problem is this. When you plant these, they will actually uh, produce slips. And what I mean by that is the, the, they'll actually grow a plant part where you see you know, leaves and stuff. And it'll look like it's working. But then when you dig them up four months from now, there won't be any actual potatoes. So it's a kind of a trick. You'll think it's working, but it's not. They're sterile. So where you want to go is to the organic section. You want to buy the organics. And especially like this sweet potato here. I know it's organic. It's a product of the U.S. It hasn't come in from overseas. So this is probably a safe bet. These will work. Now, you can start these inside in jars, kind of like when you were a kid. You know, you put the you put them in a half half of it in a jar of water with the the uh, what the heck did they use like bamboo s shoots or straws or something and put the other half in a jar and you can start them but most likely we're gonna have plenty of time because it's the early spring you don't necessarily have to do that you can just put them in the ground uh, the red potatoes are kind of a weird gamble so a friend of mine online told me about this that the paler the red potato the better like these are in a bag but they're kind of hard to see but they're pretty pale they don't look real red they look almost like a white um, when they spray it with those chemicals that sterilize them, they turn the potato much more red. So a dark red potato, if you're not sure, is probably sterile and not going to work. So there's your little lesson on potatoes. Oh, yeah, and bears are here now, coming up soon. That was a feeder. Going to have to take feeders in soon because of bears are going to be waking. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to talk about how to store this so the bears don't get it, too. Obviously, store it in, inside. But some of your plants, uh, fortunately, I don't think bears eat potatoes. I've never heard of that. I don't know. Leave it in the comments if you've heard of that. All right, so let's jump to the rest of the groceries. One thing I forgot to mention. As long as you like eating potatoes, you're in good shape. So what you do is you can kind of put them out so they start creating eyes, you know. And what I do is when that happens you cut half that potato make, um, and then you eat half and plant half so even though it's more expensive than seed potatoes if you're eating them it's not really you're just taking a scrap of the potato and starting it so there's another thing you can do if you're really new to gardening um, and how I keep advising you not to grow inside you can kinda cheat and use an arrow garden the problem is they're expensive Arrow gardens, um, even, you can get an older model relatively cheap, but what happened was, um, as they developed, they fixed a lot of problems. So you're going to buy the newest arrow garden you can get because they just work a lot simpler. And, you know, when you grow inside, so say here's my herb garden inside, you can um, use your seeds inside in one of these relatively successful this is an easy way to do it if you don't know what you're doing but again it's expensive so if you're doing it on the cheap um, you can do it's called a cracking method which is jars full of solution but even then buying the solution um, takes a little while to get started and these are past their prime I gotta start new ones that's my sage there so uh, I'm gonna try to discourage you from doing an indoor thing if you're new unless you have some sort of device that does it for you and again this is all about money the more you pay for these things the easier they are and more successful they are to run um, this all I really have to do is add water and and uh, food when it tells me to these jars I have to constantly mess with filter you know add um, pH proper balanced water so I don't burn everything and clean them and so this is practically free. I mean, once you get set up, it's really cheap. Um, you probably set this up for under 20, 25 bucks, getting the chemicals. Where you know this might be 100 bucks, and this this particular model I got it on Black Friday for 150 bucks. So you know those kind of deals, but they have smaller ones where you don't need that kind of deal. So again, you can take these plants and actually stick them out as soon as it's sunny enough, and they have a wonderful root system if you want to start them that way but I'm gonna really try to tell you if you're beginning guard or don't bother starting stuff indoors it's just not worth the work there's a little tomatoes I as I mentioned in my previous videos it's much easier to buy 
you know, a 50 pounds of dried beans or rice than to grow something like that. But you'll see the stores are picked out of anything large. Like this was a new delivery and all they had left were the tiny rice packets, uh, like the one meal things. And that's a really expensive way to try to store stuff. But so if you see large bags of rice and beans, buy them. Uh, potatoes and corn too. So the stores picked over, but what was interesting is a lot of people are focusing on the staples, and so those are gone. But the produce was actually stocked when I walked in there. They had just restocked it, and I was able to get fresh stuff. So I'm going to take you around and show you everything you want to pick up that uh, people aren't really thinking about for growing. They're just thinking about for eating. So let's check it out. You can buy live herbs, and they even have a pot sometimes like this. What you do, though, is you want to make sure you never let them flower. Keep them trimmed, because as soon as they bolt, they stop producing. You want to constantly keep them. You can propagate these and split them up, put them in pots, and then move them out in the yard as soon as the weather's good. Almost any of these will do well, and uh, you can just keep growing and growing them, because eating plain rice without any herbs, not so fun. You're good to go with just about any onion you get. And onions are cool because you basically can eat almost all the onion and just leave the little parts with the root and replant those and you will get new onion sprouts over and over. And then what you do near the end of the season is you let them actually finally grow and you collect the seeds. Now, again, this isn't ideal um, because you don't know if you know what you're getting with these but the organic ones you you pretty much do the green onions are super super easy to use and uh, you can eat off them multiple times before they wear out and a lot of times you just let them finish and go to seed and you can collect the seeds and use them for next year so something like this where a lot of people forget about leeks leeks uh, you can regrow from scraps so you can eat most of the leek and then just plant the ends and let them go again and just leave them alone in your garden after a while especially these, something like this that's organic, and you can collect the seeds for next season if you're trying to play more of the long game where you're not really sure what next year's gonna look like. Something a lot of people forget about is you can grow mushrooms. And the best ones you wanna go with are the organic oyster mushrooms. And what you're looking at is that white stuff on the very bottom of the root, that's the mycelium. So you could actually eat almost the entire mushroom again and then grow off the mycelium. Now it's a little more complicated, you have to sterilize stuff, but um, sometimes with some oysters, they're tough enough, you can put them right in the ground in the garden and they'll grow. Mushrooms can be more difficult and there is a lot of things involved with growing them, but there's lots of videos about that and I'm, I have some too. Walmart also has these back to the root grow mushroom kits. You can use these mushroom kits, you can eat the mushrooms and then use the block to spawn all kinds of stuff. You can use it as a base to grow tons of mushrooms. Now this is another tip to uh, save some money. Is you can take small root vegetables, like something like a turnip. Um, you can buy the tiny, tiny ones and this will make your money go a lot further. You can actually put these back in the ground and grow them to a much larger size so you can kind of <laughs> you kind of like um, take tidy stuff from the store plant them and get large turnips and yeah turnips are super fast and you know two months you got a gigantic turnip things like that you can um, try to buy really really tiny and then plant them and get a lot more bang for your buck that way so that's just kind of like um, a budget saving tip that these things will, will keep growing once you put it back in. So stay focused on the positive. Also, there's lots of little good ebooks on how to really grow scraps. I've done a lot of videos on those in the back uh, of my old videos. I mean, they're like eight or nine years old. I should probably do a new one. Obviously, regrow your kitchen scraps, things like uh, green onions, leeks, you know, carrots you can regrow. You can leave the ends on. Uh, there's lots of videos about those on YouTube, too. You just like grow your scraps but I'll see if I can make some as well but obviously don't throw your scraps out and when you start to use your fresh produce you know cut it with that intent and leave an inch of, on the bottoms of your green onions and things like that so you can replant them anyway I'll be here for you I'll teach you guys how to uh, do some basic gardening so 
you're not too late to the party. You can still do this. Hang in there. P.S. For you guys that keep asking me about setting up an emergency potato garden, I'm going to do a wood chip garden so it has a high success rate and it's super easy to do once it's set up. Uh, at this point, you need to be finding cardboard, and the best place to get that is the liquor store. You want to get the cardboard that doesn't have a bunch of color stuff on the print. You would just want like regular cardboard or, or mild, you know, one color print. Uh, you also want to try to be sourcing some dirt. Start calling around. Some places are still delivering. It doesn't matter if it's loam. Uh, mine's unscreened loam, which means it has rocks and stuff in it. It's okay. Just start finding it. I'm working as fast as I can to get this garden done so I can show you the video and show you how to do it yourself. But in the meantime, start collecting the cardboard boxes, try to find dirt, and see if you can get some potatoes. Alright, I'll see you soon.